Hey, this is Sam. I'm uh, oh, just walking up to the Field of Dreams area. I thought I'd just do an audio recording, and I want them to be comfortable, basically, with uh, this device as well. And try to explain. You know, I want to be able to kind of hear things, not just see things in photographs. So I didn't bring a camera up here with me. So it's just really just trying to play the flute a little bit and just leave the recorder on. Um, I'm sure they're saying things, I just can't seem to hear them at the time I'm talking or, or uh, it's so low, it's just one of those things you get it on the computer and I have a program, Audacity I think it's called, uh, that I use to kind of amplify audio files. So, well, I made it into our little area here. Hello everyone. I come back, but I didn't bring camera. I have this. I'm just actually kind of recording things on audio. Oh, I don't want to keep that from you or anything. Um, I'm going to play the flute. And uh, if you guys want to talk or anything, or um, a lot of times I just can't hear at the same time, so I'll just do it on the computer later. So, anyway, my routine basically is to do a, I guess you might call it my protocol. Oh, well, how about that? I found several glyph structures, very unusual, very deliberate geometric patterns of glyph, patterns of A's and F's, and coming up here. So, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to set my recorder down and just kind of go in my routine basically. This is what I do, basically this is what I do every time I come up here. First thing I do is just put out a general call uh, with a two-tone pattern on the flute. Yeah, it'll help if I fix the flute. Okay, here we go. That won't work. What's going on here? It's got all it's got loose for some reason. I don't know what's going on here. Huh. It's got really loose here for some reason. There we go. that too in a minute. I gotta fix this though. Oh, I'll fix it later. It's got a horse hide or a cow hide uh, tie on it to keep the one piece of it in place. It got loose. Yeah, there we go. I'll do this again. usually pause afterwards. This is basically the little people and the Sasquatch have gotten used to it. This is this is part of the thing is the part of the habituation of just going to the same area and doing the same thing. So they already know that this is kind of a call to come out and I even come here around the same time and it's around 730 right now or a little bit later and it's the sun's it's actually the reason I do it because it's cooler outside right now it's just gotten so freaking hot but thankfully in Washington state it cools off quite a bit in this part of the country so anyway I'm gonna start doing a couple flute songs
that's kind of a standard song but I love it here because in the field of dreams it feels like you're in the auditorium and when I play the flute you can actually hear it just it goes for a thousand yards or better and when you actually when you talk it's almost like you hear an, an echo so I find that a little strange in the middle of the woods like this almost like you're in a dome structure because I could hear my echo coming back a little bit so it might have to do with that whole uh, strangeness that goes on here and maybe the thinning of the veil might have something to do with that so um, so I'll go, that was the standard song that I just played that's the one I I pretty much play the same thing and then I'll, I'll make up some other stuff you know just kinda whatever I feel like playing I just start playing it I'm just like, okay, it picks up pretty good. Ah. Can you all hear me? I've been doing good with uh, pictures and photos, and finding them somewhere in the background or nearby uh, watching, and uh, become very, very conscious of the little people too that are out here. So, um, I've been more concerned about real-time experiences and uh, being able to see something or hear something while I'm out here. So uh, I'm kind of wanting to move to the next phase of interaction. And uh, I'm fully aware that they're out here. So it's not a, it's not a question anymore. It's, am I making this up in my mind or are they really out here? And I say, I think I've had enough photographic. Uh, the, the, if someone claims that my photos were anomalous or just a, a sheer coincidence it looked like something well I tell you what <clears throat> I've had a combination of not only seeing some pretty clear pictures uh, or fairly decent pictures of not only the Sasquatch but also the uh, at least three or four really great pictures of the little people right here in this area and uh, not to mention in my other experiences with uh, light beams and or portal and the orb so um, I don't have any question about that I mean this this special area for some reason things are very concentrated here the uh, the veil is thin here I don't know if the fact I mean it's an area where people go through all the time they ride even ride the motorcycles through here 
but I think part of it might be the people like myself who come up here is somehow we're tuning in a little bit closer to their reality so whereas someone else comes up here wouldn't give it a second notice anything would happen up here uh, those of us like me and Barb Shoop and uh, a number of others are having all sorts of experiences when they come up here some even feeling as they get up here they feel a wall of heat or uh, or even feeling um, a sense that they're walking through a, uh, a different energy and they come up the trail almost like a wall so that's why playing the flute and actually getting that echo chamber effect kind of makes you wonder if there's not some kind of invisible dome around this place and there's nothing to stop the acoustics from you doing this because the trees should absorb all the sound but for some reason right here it, it just the sound just flows to the trees and then it, it, it comes back so <clears throat> anyway I'm going to I actually had to wear a <laughs> I should have wore a lighter coat. Uh, and the only reason I'm wearing this right now is the mosquitoes are still a bit of a problem. I didn't want to spray mosquito spray all over my arms and everything, so I just did my hands and got this coat on to kind of protect myself from the mosquitoes. But uh, we're walking up here. I'm uh, kind of looking around here. I see things all the time up here and I kind of spot in a certain area and you know there's one area on the ridge here where I always see something up here oh yeah usually I look for areas of very dark spots and uh, usually I'll take pictures in that direction and that's it's a it's a hit and miss thing a little bit. I mean, not every dark spot's a cryptid. It's uh, but it helps narrow it down quite a bit. And it could be a legitimate shadow. It just means that the, uh, the the shadow goes in a lot deeper. Uh, the hence it makes it a little bit darker. But you develop a technique about what you're looking for. And uh, you know. I've had about four years of doing this. This is, uh, you know, after a while, you, you start to know what you're looking for. You dismiss the things that people call pareidolia. I hope I'm saying that right. Because it is possible to think everything looks like something. I always joke on some of the programs I've been on. Yeah, I see Jesus in my coffee cup. I see a Bigfoot and a leaf. Well, that's not always. That's not going to be the case necessarily. It's not going to be Bigfoot. So there's a certain amount of rational common sense you got to use. You got to have a little skepticism to buy to keep you from going off in the deep end and uh, letting your mind control everything that you're looking at. And just where you just go wild with your imagination. However. There's a balance between what you're logically looking at and imagination. I wouldn't call it imagination. Let me back up on that. I have a whole dis big discussion about imagination and that uh, that deserves consideration someday because I feel sometimes imagination is someone else's reality in another dimension. But I digress. Um, it's the intuition. It's the intuition of knowing psychically or you know, the feeling that someone's over in a certain place. Now there's no logical explanation for that. And the only reason I know that that's been kind of... I've been trained myself to intuition is to actually have, go by a feeling or an instant thought or a feeling in a certain direction have taken pictures exactly in that exact spot and have identified certain things that just stood out that I, I didn't even uh, consciously think about and uh, this has been true with a lot of things every day you tend to see synchronicities more and more 
like for some reason I'm always pulling into uh, places and seeing the number 44. Uh, looking at the clock at weird times and all of a sudden be 44 or 111. I kind to, to me that's an indication pretty much that your intuition is building up. Your psychic ability is starting to become more refined. You're actually tapping into a, um, a different reality. You're actually becoming more sensitive to the reality that's underneath this one. Or rather, this is the illusionary re reality that we're in. And the one that's real is just inside the veil. Just behind it. I think the more we're seeing now is that that veil's getting thin. So more and more people are starting to experience these things. And... Uh, and I'm hearing about it from other places too, so it's just not here. But uh, it's it's interesting. It's um, it's caused me to kind of look into different things like uh, shamanism. You know, is actually um, I'm actually attempting to get into that a bit. You know, actually do shaman. I'm not saying be, be a shaman necessarily, but practice shamanistic practices uh, not not in such a way of taking something that will cause you like peyote or, or ayahuasca or anything like that but but using uh, a drumming technique and some other techniques to actually bring you to an, an altered state of, of consciousness that allow, allow you to tap into these other realities so I think that's a big uh, key also in being able to look past the veil here in the world of the the Sasquatch and the little people and kind of uh, making those connections doing stuff like that um, I think consciously right now I'm already tapping into their thought patterns um, I'm getting a general consensus I, I would call it a general consensus thought pattern I'm receiving from all of them as the more I'm out here it's kinda of like the computer network I often see all, all living things being connected and alive. And the more you connect to nature, you tend, tend to be part of another node on that network. Then you start receiving the messages because they're connected into the network more so. You start getting connected into that same network. Pretty soon you start getting downloads of information that, that they're learning. And on the flip side, <coughs> that's how they become get a certain awareness of the world because that information is coming to them from from humans that are connected into the network they uh, they, they use us as a pair of eyes to see what's going on in the world and make their own assessment about what's happening so it's it's kind of beneficial either way so uh, and you know what's funny is is it's all it's like this this whole knowing what they're doing it's almost a sense of knowing you start knowing things uh, the more I've been out here the more I start sensing and knowing things and sometimes I wonder if I'm sleepwalking or I'm, I'm actually inner um, doing things while I'm sleeping because it sure seems like when I wake up I just get this nagging sense that I've been busy during those sleeping hours somehow or part of my consciousness is busy interacting with the con subconsciously or some part of it that day but for some reason for whatever reason the day consciousness I call it the ordinary conscious uh, doesn't doesn't seem to remember too much but it, it does it does seem to sense the underlying things that uh, you might have been affected by in, in those other parts that may have happened to you so it's like I said, it's really hard to explain. And as time goes by, I also get the sense that more of this is going to happen. It's going to be more contact. It's it's almost like a close encounter of the third kind. You're actually making a, a significant contact with other beings other than human, and uh, <clears throat> they're uh, raising our consciousness. They are making us more aware of what's around us, uh, our connection with nature. I mean, there's and, and even about energy and how it works, especially when it comes to energy that's, that they use in the forest. Uh, there's a whole plethora of things that, 
They, they, they're they slowly teaching us, basically. Uh, the more we come out here, they're very patient. They're, they are teaching us. The ones that are taking the time to slow down, get off the rat race, get off the uh, gerbil hamster wheel of civilization, slowing down, coming out here, start to uh, get into meditative modes a little bit more so that you can quiet your mind down and sit out in the forest in the silence and just open your ears up to all the, all the sounds of the forest and then and just sit there and meditate and you'd be surprised what starts coming to you it's just thought patterns uh, ways of thinking and some of them quite foreign from the way humans are used used to thinking about things so anyway I'm gonna kinda cut what I'm saying short I'm sitting here on a log right now I've been kinda re-entering re -entering some of my thoughts so I'm gonna probably transcribe the audio onto YouTube and uh, you know the whole purpose of doing this was to uh, also study to see sometimes when you're talking uh, they answer too but sometimes it's at a very different tone or very low where I personally just miss it all the time and it's nice to be able to go back and listen to a recording because sometimes things get superimposed on on an audio recording if they want different things to be heard so that's what I'm attempting to do here they're fully aware, I make them fully aware that I am recording this and I'm using a device um, so that there's no uh, there's no nothing that's sneaky or anything we're not trying to spy on them or anything like that so I got it on my hand, I'm holding it and what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to set it down on the log and just kind of silently meditate for a little bit and uh, let it kind of pick up the other kind of sounds in the forest, okay? Time. How long have we been talking? Oh, 23 minutes. Okay. Not bad. Well, that was pretty significant. Hello. <laughs> Hello. As long as they know it's not a bear, I'd rather it just be a Sasquatch. <laughs> not fear of it's not fear of animals well no it's not fear of the I guess I fear of animals fear of bear maybe I heard the stick knock that was that was pretty good I heard a big stick almost like it was being manipulated pushed down on the ground in a fairy human type of way but no one's out here and it's just a couple hundred yards from where my position was at 
Can you hear me? Are you able to answer? Well, that was awesome. <clears throat> Didn't sound like... Usually if it's an elk, it would just hear stick snapping like on the ground. But this sounded totally different. And I've heard some really weird stuff up here. And that would categorize itself as one of the things you don't normally hear here. So, and it was up closer on the side of the ridge. Hmm. Amazing. Yeah, mosquitoes are picking up a little bit. Yep. I want to hang out here a little bit longer. I'm, this is actually allowing me to keep track of the time of 37 minutes into it. didn't take long to sit there very quietly for about, what, five minutes, and then all of a sudden I hear that big crashing sound back there. Huh. I'll see you guys later. You take care. I shall be back.